Hi, my name is Dean Reiner from Hatchfinder's Fly Shop, and what I'm going to tie for you today is a crane fly. There are very few good patterns of crane flies uh, around that actually even look like a crane fly. I went to Japan last year and I was with a good friend of mine that showed me uh, how to tie a crane fly to where it actually looks like a crane fly. So I'm going to start with a size 12 hook and you can tie it in size 10 or size 12. Uh, there's two basic colors for a crane fly, uh, a dark brown and a pale yellow. And so first off, the list of materials we're going to need is a whiting hand cape neck for the wings. We're going to use uh, dark brown dubbing. We're going to use black CDC for the legs. And we're going to use whiting brown hackle. I've already got some tied. Now this is saddle hackle. Um, and it's right at the end of the, the cape, which has the biggest and broadest feathers. I've already stripped one, and they're in there soaking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a base thread. I'm using dark brown, 8 uh uni-thread thread. I'm going to start just behind the eye, and I'm going to bring my base thread all the way down to the end. Crane flies are very, very delicate, very, very thin, and not much thicker than, uh, not much thicker than the hook itself. So that's where I'm going to start is right there. I'm going to pick up a hackle stem, and you want a good long one so that uh, you can make it all the way up the, the hook. This fly will kill them on the beaver head. Also works well on the Yellowstone too. Okay, clip off the end. Now when I tie this on, the curve of the feather faces down. So that leaves, that leaves the dull side up. I'm going to make my wraps very tightly together because I don't want any spaces in between the hackle. Bring it all the way up. I'm a little slow here because I want to make sure I get all the wraps tight to just behind the eye. Now I'm going to wrap the body. I'm going to turn the hackle stem over to where the curve is looking at me. And I'm going to start my wraps. Crane flies has, have a very delicate, delicate body, finely segmented. And I tie it right up to where I had the thread stopped and tie it off. And nip off the excess and tie it down good. Now you can see how finely segmented that is and how thin that body is. If you really sit and look at a crane fly, you're going to see just how 
delicate it is. All right, now that I've got the body done, I'm going to take a little bit of Zapigap and I'm going to reinforce that. Just a drop or so. I'll take my botkin and spread it out over the hackle stem. And it has a nice dark brown color. Wipe off the excess. Okay, the next step in this flying is the wing. And I'm going to take the whiting hen cape. And I'm going to pick feathers that are very closely matched, and they're going to be right down towards the end of the neck. I'm going to grab two of them. Just find two that I like. There's one. There's two. You want to stroke them a little bit because you want them to be rather straight. Now this is a white neck because most of the uh, crane flies you're going to see in a dark brown are going to have a very light, very light feather, very light looking wing. All right, now that I got my feathers picked out, I'm going to turn them back to back and even up. Making sure they're the same length. Like that. Because when I spread these out into a flat wing, like a spent wing, but it's not, the, the feathers will lay flat on each side. I'm going to measure the feather to be the same as the length of the body to keep it nice and proportional. I'm going to cut off the excess. I'm going to strip back on the end so that I have some place to tie. Not much, just a little bit. You can see how the feathers are going in each direction. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to tie this in, not turning the feather, just keeping everything nice and straight. Bring my wraps to the eye. And back again. All right. You're going to have to use your thumb to manipulate these feathers just a mite to where they sit up on top like they're supposed to. Now the wing is laying back. I'm going to have to tie a figure eight pattern and bring those wings forward. So I'm going to do it one at a time. Take the first feather, come around behind it. See she's already starting to lay, lay out straight. Another, whoops. Now you got to be careful. You're not dealing with with uh, real stout material here. Don't pull too hard, or you pull the feather right out. Okay, got that one in. I'm going to bring this one around. The strength of the thread will pull the feather forward. You just want to make sure she's standing straight up. Figure eight it just a few times to where you get everything set the way you like it. Okay, we got the wings in. Now what I'm going to do is, because it is so delicate and 
chances are um, the fish will tear off one of the wings, but I am going to put just the slightest amount of Zapigap on that junction. Just to make sure everything holds the way I want it. Just a little bit. All right. Play with it a little bit, make sure the wings are right, parallel to one another. Next step is dubbing. I'm going to use a brown dubbing, but you can use an olive dubbing or uh, anything that's super fine. I'm not, there again, I'm not going to use a whole lot because this is a very, very skinny fly. Make the dubbing very tight. All right, and then just you have to figure eight the dubbing because the thorax on these flies are very, very tiny. They don't have much of a thorax, as you can see. Okay, now, the legs. A lot of people use any total number of things. The legs are so thin. And what I do is I take black CDC, and again, this is from Trout Hunters, and what I'm looking for on the base of a feather are long spindly bivets. So you need a rather wide feather that has long bivets. You may not get all of them on one. That's about the right length right in there. You need about three or four they don't have to be exactly the same length. I'm not happy with that one. Let's see if I can find something a little bit. There you go. Now this fly normally has six legs, as all insects. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the first pair of legs, or set of legs, and cross it right on top with the dubbing. And I'm going to come in behind it and pull it to the side, like that. Trim off the excess here, because we're going to go over it again with some more dubbing. Find some more. Ooh, there's a nice one. Come across the top again, right behind the wing. And that's the legs. Trim off the excess. Legs don't have to be even. I'm going to want to put a little more dubbing to cover everything up. And there again, I'm just going to use a very small amount of dubbing. stuff that I tied in 
Let me get my dummy straight. dubbing make that thorax stand up the way it should it's always better to use too little dubbing than too much okay oops to lay that dubbing on rather delicately to just cover all your work and bring it down to the eye lip finisher three good wraps snug everything up now this fly here unless you want to encase it in concrete <clears throat> be lucky to last two fish but the nice thing about it is you get to catch two fish and then you have to switch flies because like I say it is extremely delicate but laying flat on the water trout just cannot resist last step drop a super uh, head cement head cement seems to be coming out too much but that's all right and that my friend is a crane fly that looks just like a crane fly 